All right, so uh, today, today I am preaching. I see some of you kind of looking back and forth here. I'm up here, Greg's back there. What's going on? Jeremy's got the preaching mic on, what? Um, yes, I am preaching today. Pretty excited about it. Continuing on uh, with the series called Bullseye, What Are You Aiming For in Life? And we've had a great time, you know, the last few weeks talking about this. Uh, if you've missed that, we, uh, we have, for your uh, viewing pleasure, all of our uh, messages are online. We've got a, a YouTube channel that has our messages. Uh, we've got our website that has more. Uh, we've got a podcast, all of that good stuff. You guys are welcome to check that out, but hopefully you do that later and not right now because I'm trying to preach here, okay? <laughs> so, so we started off looking at uh, the, the first week we were looking at, at the story of Lot and the fact that Lot pitched his tents facing Sodom. Okay, and, and, and really we saw that when he did that, that's pretty much what he was aiming for. Um, and, and that's not good. I mean, you guys remember the story of, of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and how God you know, brought down the thunder, right, so to speak. Um, and, and really that's what he was aiming at. That's what he was looking at. And we saw the fact that when we do that, when we pitch our tents, we gotta, we, we've got to be mindful of where our tents are facing. Because if, if they're not facing God, then we're going to get off track, right? If they're not facing God, then we're going to miss the bullseye. We're going to miss the target. And so we, we kind of started off talking about that. Then the next week we looked at the specs, the specs uh, for, for our vision, right? Our vision uh, for, for God's bullseye. And we saw that our vision is birthed out, out of four things. And Greg used the word specs as, as kind of the, the, the basis for that. We got surrender, perseverance, examination, and courage. Right? And I'm sure you guys all remembered that. I needed my notes to tell me that, but I, I bet you you guys all remembered that. Yeah. And, uh, but the vision, that, that vision is how we see the bullseye. That's how we're going to make it. That's how we're going to aim in the right direction. If we're not looking, if we, if we don't have that vision, then we'll never make it. Right? And so then last week, last week we looked at the arrow. And we saw that the arrow is really God's gift because God has given each one of us a gift. God has given each one of us a gift, and we have a responsibility to, to use that gift. We, we talked about the, the parable of the master and the servants, how the master went away, and, and he left all this gold with his servants. And then um, when he came back later, we saw what the servants did with that money. Uh, you know, two of the servants had invested it and made money back, and then there was one guy that just buried it in the sand. And we saw that that kind of has, has a parallel with our own lives, because God has given us a gift, Right? God has given us a gift, and, and we have a choice either to invest that gift or to bury it in the sand. And I, I, I want to encourage you guys, if you did not do it last week, I want you to encourage, go and, and think about that. Are you using God's gift? Has God given you a gift? Yes, he's given us all a gift. That, that's an easy answer. Are you using God's gift? That's a tougher, that's a tougher answer right there. I want you guys to think about that. That's, that's a, a challenge if you didn't do that last week to, to do that this week. But then this week we're going to continue on the series. We're going to continue on with this idea of bullseye and, and where are you aiming? What are you, what are you pointing your life at? And today we're going to be talking about the sight on the bow. You know, we've talked about the bow, we've talked about the arrow, we've talked about the target, but today we're going to be talking about the sight. You look through the sight, you line up your shot, and then you let it go, Right? You look through that site, that site helps you line things up. But what you have to realize is that when you, when you, pull, that, when you pull that bow back and you get ready to shoot, okay, if you're, if you're not focused on that site, if you're off over here seeing what's going on, you're going to be pulled all over the place. It takes focus to be able to shoot that. It takes focus to be able to hit the bullseye, right? It takes focus to be able to make it. And, and we see the same thing in our lives. It takes focus to hit what God has for us. It takes focus for us to, to, to hit the target that God has laid out for us. And that's the key. That's the key this week. This week we're going to be talking about focus. We're going to be talking about what it takes to hit it. Um, because if our focus is being pulled, if our focus is being pulled in all these different directions, we're never going to make it. We're never going to hit that target. And too often that happens, right? Too often that happens. We have all these different things that we want to do. And, and really, they're not all bad. Right? We, we get pulled in all these different directions. I have a job, I have this meeting that I have to make, and that's going to pull me off over here, and then I have this ministry to do, and that ministry to do, and this ministry to do, and I got to take care of my kids, and I got to go to the soccer game, and I got to go, and we're so, we're so un, unfocused. And it's not bad stuff, right? It's not bad stuff, but if, if it's taking us away from what God wants, if we're not able to focus on what God wants, then we're not in his will. Then we're not going to hit his target. Jeremiah 10.23 says, Lord, I know 
that people's lives are not their own. It's not for them to direct their steps. You know, how many of you, I, I'm, I'm going to start off this sermon by saying I am preaching to me, right? Any of you who know me know that I have a hard time with focus. I'm just going to lay that out there from the beginning. I am preaching to me. But how many of you guys, along with me, have thought that they know what God wants, or they know what they want to do, even if it's not what God wants, right? I've done that. I've done that. I've, many times I've gone out and done what I wanted to do, even though I knew it wasn't what God wanted or what God had. But that's a great way to be unfocused, right? We're not, we're not looking through the sight. We're not seeing the target. We're not seeing the bullseye when we do that. When we do that, we're, we're getting off track. We're, we're, we need to stay focused by following God's plan for our lives. And so that kind of brings us to the passage that we've got for this week. We're going to be looking at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 today. And this really has a, a blueprint for uh, focus, really. How to stay focused on what God wants. How to stay focused on God's plan for our lives. So just starting off there with this passage, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. And so, I, you know, I love taking, I love taking these, these scriptures. And this is one that I think a lot of us know, right? How many of you have heard that one before? I, I have, right? And I tried to memorize it and stuff, you know? And so um, it's one of those famous passages. But I love taking, there's something called the message, uh, and that's a paraphrase of the Bible. Basically, somebody took the Bible and then rewrote it in novel form, in, in the form of a novel. It's really, it's really interesting. And I don't necessarily like to study with it, but I like taking key verses like this and seeing what God, what, what, what kind of a, a different angle on that verse is. Because the very last, the very last uh, sentence of that, he will make your path straight. The message says, God is the one who will keep you on track. And once again, I know that I need in my life from time to time for God to put me back on track, right? I need for, for time to time for God to reach down and say, hey, Jeremy, that's not right, okay? I need that. I, I'm sure you guys do too. And I, and I love that, the just, just real life language. God is the one who will keep you on track. And we need that. We need that because really we see that, that our focus is built on our priorities. Our priorities are built on our purpose and our purpose is built on a relationship with Jesus Christ. If we do not have that foundation, if we do not have that relationship with him, we will never be able to focus on what God has. We will never be able to hit the target that God has, the, the purpose that he has and the plan that he has in our lives. And we realize that God does have a purpose for us. God does have a plan. Romans 8.28 says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God has a purpose. He has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11. This is Greg's life verse, I think. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God has a plan for your life. But if we miss out on that relationship, we are not going to have the focus. We are not going to be able to hit the target and, and hit that purpose that God has for us. And so looking at this passage in, in Proverbs, I see four things that we need to have focus. Four things out of this, this passage that I see. The first thing I see is dependence. Uh, the verse says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We, we need to trust in him. We need to lean on him. We need to totally and completely have faith in him. This idea of childlike faith, right? And, and, and when, it when it comes to trust, there's nothing that I see that's, that's better the, or, or, or a better illustration of trust than air travel, right? Traveling by airplane. You know, I love it. When you're, when you're going to the airport, what are you looking for? You're looking for your terminal, okay? If that doesn't sound bad, I, I don't know what does, right? And, and you're trusting that the, the airline is not going to crush your bags or lose them somewhere in Antarctica or something like that. But then my favorite, my favorite is when the pilot gets on, he's like, okay, we're about to start our final descent here. And I'm like, if this is my final descent, <laughs> I don't want to know about it. I want, I want to go down, I want, I want to be oblivious, right? But you, but you have trust, you have faith that, that you're going to make it. You have faith, you have you, the, this trust that, that you're going to, you're going to happen. And, and really, that's what we need in our lives is to trust God, to lean totally, to have this childlike faith that we trust in him totally and completely. The second thing I see that is that we need dedication. We need dedication. The verse says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
right? It's not just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, look at it, James 1, 6. It says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. This idea of, of, of being blown around and, and having no purpose and no direction and just going wherever the wind takes you. That's what happens when you doubt. That's what happens when, when, when you, you ask without, without faith. But when I think about faith, when I think about just this, this whole idea of childlike faith and trust, I think about my son Sam. Okay? Because when Sam prays, things happen. Right? He has, he has this childlike faith that he, he's not been brought down by the world yet. He's not been taught that he needs to doubt. And so he doesn't doubt. He believes. He believes. He, he asks in faith without doubting and things happen. And that's so amazing. And we miss out on that so much. I love what the message says about that, that passage in James. It says, don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. Man, if that's not an adult, right? We have this idea of childlike faith on one side and then this adult that's keeping all their options open. And that's me. I'm, I've said it. I'm preaching to myself. I, I like to keep my options open. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to have that, that childlike faith, to trust with your whole heart. Because there is no halfway with God, right? There is no plan B in the Bible, is there? No. No, there's trust. There is faith, complete and total faith. And that's what it takes, this childlike faith. The, the third thing I see in here is discipline. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. I love that because so many times I think I know it all, right? I'm, I'm, I'm intelligent. I'm smart. I think I know it all. And if, you don't, if you're not one of those people, I'm sure you know somebody who is one of those people, right? Right? We know it all. But I, I'm telling you, you can't do that. You can't put your trust in yourself. Why? Because we mess up. I've taught myself that, Right? <laughs> We mess up. We are not perfect. We can't lean on our own understanding. We have to put our whole weight on something else, not ourselves. Proverbs 3, 7. This is just a continuation of the passage we're in. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Do not be wise in your own eyes. You know, that, that fits a lot of people that I know. Maybe even myself. I don't know. Um, but do not be wise in your own eyes. Why? Because we don't know. We don't know what God's plan is. Because sometimes God, God's plan does not make sense. Right? Sometimes God has us and wants us to do things that are not logical. Mm, where's that coming from? I remember grow, when, when I was uh, going off to college and trying to decide what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I kind of started out, I was going to be a music performer. I was going to play my trombone and make a lot of money. Okay, I... Yeah, that, that's, about, that's about it. There's not a whole lot of money to be made in playing the trombone, right? Some, some of you don't even know what a trombone is, and that's why there's not a lot of money to be made playing the trombone. And so I got to college. I was, I was, I was a good trombone player, but I wasn't that good. I'm not going to make that much money at it. So I decided, okay, I'm going to be a music therapist, and then discovered that I really wouldn't make a good therapist. So then I decided that I was going to be a band teacher, which is great because that's actually how I met my wife. So I'm pretty glad that I had that kind of phase in my life. Um, but then that wasn't going to pan out. And then I was going to be, you know, I was going to do music instrument repair and then computer repair and all these different things. And I really got to hand it to Megan because for a while there, it was like every week that I would have something new that I was going to do. And she'd have to call her parents and say, all right, now he's going to do this. And now he's going to do this. And constantly changing, constantly changing, but always in the back of my mind, I had this idea that I was supposed to be a worship pastor. And, and I don't know where it came from because you guys, you guys didn't know me back then. Um, you know, I really, I, I was a pretty shy person. I would break into a cold sweat. I would have to sit and think for about 20 minutes what I would say when I was going to call on the phone. Like I would just freeze. I couldn't talk to strangers. I mean, I, I, it was horrible. Sing, I couldn't sing for Megan, let alone a whole room full of people right? You know, and, but, but God's saying, I want you to be a worship pastor. And if I had stuck to what made sense for me, I'd probably still be trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with my life. 
if I stuck to what made sense, I'd still be working out and I'd still be changing every week. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I'd probably still be doing that. But I listened. I did what didn't make sense because God will call us to do something that's the opposite of what we're inclined to do, right? So we need to not lean on what we think is right and what we think is logical, but trust that God knows and God has a plan for our lives. Amen? All right, and the last thing I see uh, from this passage we need is discernment. Discernment. In all your ways, submit to Him. Another, another translation says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge who God is, who Christ is, what He did, that authority that He has in our lives. We submit to Him totally and completely. We see in Colossians 3.17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, uh, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. We do it all in all our ways, in everything we do, we do it for Jesus. We submit to him. And if we do this, if we have this focus in our lives, what does it say that, it, that will happen? He will make your path straight. I love that. Thinking about, a, thinking about a bow and an arrow, pulling it back, he's going to make the path straight. You just let it go and let it fly. That's what focus does for us. And so really, I want to I leave you just with this thought. Is when I focus on God's purpose, I get God's perfect will for my life. That's what bullseye is all about. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for this time, just this opportunity to get into your word, to to dig deeper and, and see really what you say. Lord, so many times I get stuck. I get stuck on what I want it to say, what I what I what I think and what I know and Really, Lord, I just want to focus on you. I want to focus on your plan. I want to focus on your purpose. And Lord, that's the challenge. That's the challenge is to have that focus. The challenge is to have that focus and totally and completely give it up to you. I pray that we would be able to do that this week. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.